Okay, here we go. So Yugoslavia used to be a country that existed here in the Balkans that was made up of either six or seven modern day countries depending on who you're asking. These six or seven countries include Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia, Montenegro, Macedonia, er, wait, no, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, and Kosovo if you're asking these countries, and not Kosovo if you're asking these other countries. The territory that used to make up Yugoslavia is full of awkward details and conflicts, like the fact that to this day, 2.4% of the territory of Bosnia and Herzegovina is covered by landmines, left over from the wars following Yugoslavia's collapse. But hypothetically speaking, what would a reunited Yugoslavia possibly look like if it came back into existence today? First off, Yugoslavia's population would be 21,412,000 people, the 8th most populous country in Europe ahead of Romania but behind Poland. This is down from Yugoslavia's population back in 1991, however, which was 23,230,000 people. Every country inside the former Yugoslavia today has negative population growth rates except for Macedonia, so this trend of a declining population isn't likely to stop anytime soon. There's also the question as to whether a modern Yugoslavia would join the European Union or not. Slovenia and Croatia both are currently EU member states, but the others currently aren't. This might explain part of why Slovenia and Croatia are also both wealthier on average today than the rest of the former Yugoslav states, and with the average citizen in a modern Yugoslavia making $18,526 per year, that actually means that citizens in Slovenia and Croatia would probably stand to lose on average in such a scenario, while citizens in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia, Kosovo, Montenegro, and Macedonia would stand to gain on average. The total nominal GDP GDP of a recreated Yugoslavia would stand at 191.045 billion US dollars, making it the 53rd largest economy in the world ahead of Romania, but slagging behind both the Czech Republic and Greece. A modern Yugoslavia would be most comparable in area to the United Kingdom, but as mentioned previously, she would only have a third of the UK's population. This population would also be astoundingly diverse, which is part of why Yugoslavia failed when it did. Ethnically speaking, 35% of the population would be Serbs, another 20% Croats, 11% Albanians, 9% Bosniaks, 8% Slovenes, 6% Macedonians, 1% Montenegrins, and 10% others. The linguistic variations in the country would also very closely mirror this ethnic diversity. And then there's everybody's favorite part, the religious differences. 43% of modern Yugoslavia's population would be Orthodox Christians followed up by 27% being Catholic, 22% more adhering to Islam, with the remaining 8% divided between non-religious persons and other faiths. Speaking in military terms, the Yugoslav armed forces would have a very modest budget of 2.2 billion US dollars, and a small size of 228,000 total soldiers, split between active duty and reserves, which is about comparable in size to the British military, of 234,000 total soldiers. The top five large largest cities inside the modern Yugoslavia would all be capital cities of pre-existing countries, with Zagreb and Belgrade being the only ones with a population of over 1 million people. Belgrade in particular would likely become the capital, since it was old Yugoslavia's capital and would remain the biggest city in the new one. Overall, if Yugoslavia suddenly did come back into existence again, it would have some serious problems to figure out, and it's unclear whether or not they could actually be solved. I promise that I'll be making more of these reunited country videos in the future, but if you're still curious about more in the meantime, then you should check out my book that I wrote last year, where I talk about what a reunited German Empire, a reformed Viking Empire, and others might look like. The link on Amazon is in the description. And if you enjoy watching these videos from me, I'd also highly recommend that you check out the videos that my friends over at Skillshare are uploading to their channel to keep feeding your curiosity. They have animated videos that try to answer interesting questions, like why something goes viral, as well as mini lessons from people like Simon Sinek if you want to learn from the experts. Check out their channel and videos next, and I'll see you next week for another new video then where I'll hopefully not have a cold.